Here it is, uh, February 12th, 2017. Um, this is mostly my little library is fully assembled. Um, I thought I might just go over all the mistakes um, and just the general construction of it, um, at least for my own sake. Um, the project really started because I had some leftover glass and some uh, knockdown furniture from Costco. Uh, where you could choose different fronts and I did not choose the glass fronts. Um, so this was the exact size I had laying around which was tempered glass. Um, so I was like, oh, I, you know, I'll do a quick quick project of a uh, little library with it. In the end I didn't use it because um, I was a little concerned that uh, if the, grass, uh, the glass got broken it could be a hazard to the kids or whatever. Um, so I did not do that. In the end which actually increased the cost um, a little bit the bottom I just had an old uh, stair riser that's a pine stair riser that I, I, I actually got for some shelving um, so uh, so I was like oh, I'll use that as the base so the sides are just uh, I think half inch plywood um, and uh, I did mortars just partially into the into the base a little bit um, I did use brad nails a lot in this. Um, and I realize I'm not very good at that, uh, hiding those nails. So I don't know how much big a fan I have of that. But anyway, the general design I took from my hometown uh, library. Now the library doesn't look quite like this anymore because they built a, uh, a wing on the front. But, uh, but anyway, I pulled up an old picture from some archive. This is a postcard. Uh, probably at the turn of the last century of, of what the library looked like. It was a very pretty basic building um, but if you see the the front of this building I tried to match it uh, pretty close to that. Probably the the biggest uh, deviation from that are the uh, the pools. I couldn't resist uh, doing the um, library lions on the front. Um, this Christmas we had a family gift of a 3D printer and uh, so I actually printed up some uh, some pools based off of that. Uh, I'm a little concerned long term about that, but I, you know, PLA they say biodegrades, but my guess is it's only when it's buried in the ground. Um, and I printed these solid, and then for extra support, there's actually a metal rod that runs up uh, through the uh, through the lion to keep it. Uh, hopefully, give it a little more uh, rigidity. Um, I think the doors were the first thing I did because just because I had the glass uh, and I you know I've recently well, not that recently but I had a miter saw so I ended up miter in the corners and then uh, I kind of regretted that decision a little bit later I kept worrying about the strength and you know the uh, oh they look kind of nice the they're not the uh, the strongest so I ended up doweling the tops but then I got a concern that I uh, that the dowel rods were long enough so in the end I I decided to put some stainless steel corner braces uh, in there. I'm a little, well this is kind of one thing I'm not a big fan of is the braces didn't actually, they didn't actually have, um, uh, they, they, didn't ha they weren't built countersunk so the screws stick up uh, from the top. But uh, you know I, I went from making this a quick project to uh, a fine project so I, I just kind of went with that at, for, at the time. The uh, so the so then I was okay with that. I think it should be probably st sturdy enough for that. I did go a little deeper than I probably should have into the sides. Um, I mean it's kind of a nice look and it's probably okay, but uh, I, I maybe should have left a little more material long term uh, if this uh, wood starts cracking. Um, the hinges I actually uh, got some uh, some self clothing. Uh, hinges uh, that I thought were okay but I must have measured wrong because there wasn't enough material in the side and so in the end I just decided to go with just some uh, some very basic stainless steel hinges. I did counter sink them into the or cut them into this to give it a little more rigidity there but I think I thought I didn't need it on the side or uh, I guess I was concerned about having the hinge sit down into the wood and, and capturing moisture and so in the end I just decided to mount those flutch uh, 
I'm kind of uh, don't know if I made the right decision there. Um, the uh, the doors actually held together by um, by magnets. And the magnets themselves, I, I ordered from eBay. Um, I was a little concerned they were very strong uh, that you'd be even be able to pull the door open. So, uh, but when I, but I went, in the end, I didn't make them close all the way. That actually, that they never actually touch. Um, so, when I was looking at just putting like a washer on one side and the magnet on the other, it didn't have enough closing or enough sticks. So I ended up mounting rear earth on both sides. Um, and then to, I, I dr drilled a little too deep and I just wanted to get the field up a little bit. So in the end I just stacked some washers. They stick nicely just with the, <laughs> with the magnet, but I actually put a little um, rapid fuse glue on there just kind of hold them in place to keep them from being pulled up from courageous children. Um, the, the front, we had some mahogany left over from a, a, a homemade xylophone project. So I ended up just uh, using a leftover scrap there to make the, the door and the window look. And then, you know, I just made three steps, which is actually three steps on the, on the model. And uh, this is modeled pretty closely from the front end, like I said. Uh, I did end up putting uh, um, some caulk on the top edges of these elements just to kind of keep moisture from, from like kind of sitting there long term. Uh, and then while we're down here, we'll take a look at the internal structure. Uh, so I went kind of quick and dirty on the top joinery here. Uh, so it's not really, this is, top isn't quite encased there, it was just kind of floating. Uh, I think if when I, when I, by the time I got done with this, I actually put a, quite a bit of time in it. I probably should have just done it proper. Um, I had some caulk. I was originally thinking that the caulk would just be some pine color, and I picked about the lightest wood shaded color I could get. And as you can see, it was I kind of used it in this area because I didn't really care too much. It's not really uh, that visible um, up here. So I so I tested it here. You can see my caulk works not very good. I guess I didn't take any time to clean it up either. Uh, but anyway, I was like, oh, okay, that's not going to work. So I already had some clear, so I ended up just using clear, so looking for everything. The top is kind of joined like kind of a traditional roof. So you see I just have four triangles that I've made. They go across the upper ridge. Um, and then on the sides, uh, just another little triangle piece that shoots off that end. And on the very ends, those are actually just attached to the roof. And it was actually kind of nice The I made the roof a detachable so I could actually finish it. Um, I could finish it and uh, and because otherwise I was worried about these gaps. I could finish it there uh, and make it look a little bit neater um, and, and make sure I got good coverage. And as you kind of see right over here, I you know when I did the top, I was thinking this is the bottom. When I did the bottom, I thought that was the top. So that's one thing I got to touch up in the final um, rounds. And again. You kind of see it's a little sloppy with my 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 wire brads, but uh, uh, so be it. Um, yeah, and so on the top, I didn't attach it to later. Uh, again, another thing I'm not very good at. You can see it here, but at this angle, you can see it. So I patched the nail holes, and I, I thought I sanded them out, but then it kind of spread out all over that. And when I put it finish on top of them, it, they really kind of stuck out a bit. Uh, I'm not really sure what to do about that long term. I was thinking maybe if you put like the first coat of varnish down, then fill the holes, and then that way the wood would be uh, have at least one piece of, of there, or not use finishing nails at all. But again, uh, more work to clamp things up. The uh, let's see if there's anything else of noteworthiness. I guess one thing I notice is I varnish this in the evenings uh, after work. I try to put a fair amount of, of paint on top, or uh, finish on top of it, but the lighting wasn't that great. It was always in the evenings, and uh, I was a little shocked when I got to this weekend and realized that uh, I had drips and stuff I didn't see in the, there, so probably a strong work light in there would be uh, much more preferable. 
I spent a fair amount of time thinking about how I was going to do the roof. Uh, actually, uh, I, I was originally thinking I would, I was even playing with the idea of doing a penny roof, although it would be a fair amount of pennies. Um, but I guess that looking that up was beneficial because that's the first time I found the, the DAP Rapid Fuse glue, which is actually very nice. It's, it's kind of like a super glue that glues onto uh, multiple things. So all these elements on the front here I used to glue on there. So it sets up fairly fast and uh, yeah, it's like super glue, but it'll work on wood. The, and then I decided to just uh, use aluminum, uh, uh, some aluminum angle iron um, on there. And if, if you look here, the roof's not really a 45 degree pitch. This is just for simplification. So this is 45. This is 45. Um, but it does make these angles uh, greater than 45 here and here. I think it's maybe 130. You can, uh, there are calculators on there to, to calculate angles of pyramids um, to do that. So, so I made this really nice for the 45. So this is, you just, you just clip these and you can use, um, actually I think I originally just used uh, some uh, angle cutters. But uh, if you had some 10 snips or something like that, it'd be fine. Um, and I just filled in the grooves and with a bunch of silicon and push it down. Uh, and then it kind of turned into a bit of a mess because I tried to clean, I got some on the thing, on the strips themselves. And as I tried to clean those off, uh, you know, aluminum does oxidize very quickly, and as you clean it off, you get kind of like a uh, a gray dust, and it actually went into the uh, silicon. So as I was cleaning things up, you can see I've got some 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 gray gray areas. The good thing is, is it really kind of tells you where you have silicon. So as long as you take that silicon up. Uh, it's it's pretty good and you see here I've actually sanded a little bit more I gotta go maybe clean it up just a little bit more and, and then probably put some more polyurethane on it um, bending this uh, bend, bending this angle iron back um, I found out what worked well was I, I, got, I do have like a, a bench vise so like a long wood, wood bench vise I could put it in there and, and just kind of clamp it down so I put the back the back elbow uh, against the wood and I put a, a sheet of uh, just regular flashing um, on top of the on the other side to let the outer edges slide a little bit and so that it would spread them so I could just keep spreading them until I got the approximate shape but the angles are slightly different uh, and I hear I did have to bend it back and I did have some cracking but in the end I figured there's so much silicon back behind that joint I, you know, I didn't want to go have to buy more stock so it is what it is um, the door, this is because of the, the hinges, I, the, I ended up, I, I'm not sure that this is, I went with the felt, uh, a felt weather stripping, just because I like the natural material better, uh, but I, the rubber might have fastened a little bit, but on top of that, the thickness of this was just about right. I didn't want too much outer pressure, because um, I wanted the door to kind of uh, sit flush, so you can see there, here this door is a little twisted. So it's not sealing quite at the bottom there. Yes. But if you see on the back side here, it's just kind of uh, just exactly the right size. Maybe you'd want a little more pressure to seal it up. But I think there you just kind of want to mostly act as a barrier for insects. Um, and maybe a little, mo little moisture. Um, when I cut these metal, I actually purposely cut them shorter. I was a little concerned about having like a a nice sharp edge here where you could uh, someone could bump their head on or something so I actually cut these a little bit shorter maybe I should have been a little more regular and I might decide to file those down a little bit more just to make it uh, a little less uh, dangerous um, see we think that might be all the elements I guess the other thing do I did put silicon across all the top of these surfaces just to keep water from standing on top of them um, and I did print that with the on a 3d printer um, this this PLA is supposedly mixed with a little bit of wood uh, and if you sand it it's supposed to look more like a, a wood color because it's got a little bit of wood fibers in there uh, maybe it looks a little bit that way um, but uh, that's okay we got a couple uh, 
modern synthetic elements in there. Um, well, I think that's pretty close to everything and all my mistakes. I guess I can say a little bit about the way the felt was attached. I ended up just stapling it. Uh, you can see here I just kind of cut it straight across. Then again, this is where I wasn't being super exact. Uh, see, there's my just used regular scissors to cut it and took a staple gun to attach it. Oh, I should say how the glass is attached, or the plexiglass. The plexiglass just kind of sits in the frame and I cut some, just some strips in there. Uh, I'm seeing this done with dowling rods. Um, if I figure the square, I guess the one thing is, is uh, I did get like a, uh, I did get a, a handheld push, um, a, a brad pusher. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work terribly well, because um, the uh, it didn't seem to want to push in all the way. So it always left the nails a little bit stuck out. Uh, so in the end, because I, and I switched to plexiglass, so, I was, so uh, that bit of planning I don't think was necessary. So I ended up just using the brad nailer for the rest of it. Uh, you can see here, again, you can kind of see a little bit of the sloppiness of the work. Did get a ding right there in the in the in the wood at some point, running into a counter. I don't mind that too much. I mean, pine furniture gets beat up pretty easily, and I think it's people that have it seem to like the charm of it being beat up. So it just pre-beat up a bit. Um, and then uh, there are other. Uh, I just thought of another part of the finishing that I, that I messed up. I guess the other thing, I don't know if I mentioned, I guess I did the uh, the finishing, but I guess the other thing was sealing up the glass. I put some silicon down in there. Um, I think just the glass would have been nicer because I could scrape it, but I was concerned about scraping it, so I think I'd just leave it a little bit on the dirty side. I did have it taped up. But anyway, I'll try to fix as many of the flaws as I can or what I feel like, but uh, for the most part it's put together and there she is.